Hey there! Welcome to Clean Cut, and let's talk about the truth. This is where we can talk about life, reality, and anything else. There's just one rule. We have to use solid logic and common sense. Today we'll talk about skepticism, but before we can talk about it, we first need to know what it is. There are two meanings to the word skepticism, the philosophy of skepticism and the method of skepticism. The method of skepticism is actually pretty simple. You just don't believe something until you can find pretty good evidence of it. Nowadays we call this healthy skepticism, and it's actually a good thing. Believing something without any evidence can lead to a lot of mistakes. However, the philosophy of skepticism is different. According to philosophical skepticism, we can never know anything for certain, because no matter how strong we think the evidence or the logic is, there's always the chance that our senses could be deceiving us, or we might be delusional, or something like that. In short, when in doubt, doubt. Now the question is, what's wrong with the philosophy of doubt? Well, let's review. In the second episode, we talked about how logic is about drawing conclusions honestly, consistently, and with the desire to learn the truth. So if you want your philosophy to be logical and therefore a legitimate, coherent philosophy that we can study, it needs to be all these things. Honest, consistent, and motivated by the will to learn the truth. Is skepticism useful for learning the truth? Well, no. The whole point of skepticism is about insisting that you can't know the truth. Is skepticism consistent? No, it's not. You see, skepticism tries to make the definite claim that you can't make definite claims. That's about as inconsistent as a philosophy can get. Is skepticism honest? Well, it can't be honest if it's inconsistent with itself. So we've learned that philosophical skepticism is both useless and provably false. But wait, what if you're only halfway skeptical? I've had someone say this to me recently, so I feel I should bring it up. There's a belief system out there that makes the following claim. We can trust logical conclusions right now, but maybe there's a time or a place where logic doesn't apply. I think this is the skeptics' attempt to have their cake without having to pay for it. This idea means that they can just toss logic aside whenever they don't want to deal with it, and they don't have to worry about the contradictions that real skepticism involves. The problem is, fake skepticism is also a self-contradicting philosophy. It's just harder to understand why, because it's so abstract, so different from what most people think about. Here's the thing. A fake skeptic says that they believe there is a place or a time or something else where logic doesn't apply. Let's call it a no-logic zone. Now, if there is a no-logic zone somewhere, that zone would be able to mess up all the logic in it, and we wouldn't even need to explain why, since it's not logical and doesn't need logical reasons to do what it does. On top of that, it doesn't invalidate my logic, since I'm over here and it's over there. At least, at first glance, that seems to be the case, until you start asking questions about this no-logic zone. Question number one. Who says that zone can't position itself right over me, or you, or anything else, anytime it wants to, and contradict everybody's logic just for kicks? I mean, it's a no-logic zone, so by definition it doesn't follow logical rules. What's to stop it from expanding and making the whole universe illogical? You see, no-logic zones can't exist, because to keep them in one place doing one thing would involve forcing them to follow some kind of logical rule, and no-logic zones can't do that. Once that's out of the way, we get right back to the problem with real philosophical skepticism. If the rules of logic don't always apply, then why should I listen to yours? That's a mouthful, though, so let's sum up what we've gone over so far. Saying we don't need a reason to doubt our evidence, our logic, or our conclusions is a lie, no matter how you try to dress it up. So obviously, if we're going to doubt our conclusions, we do need a reason to doubt them. That's the number one thing we can take away from this. Skepticism is just plain wrong, because we need some reason to doubt our reasoning. That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.